All right, I am building the first step without instructions. So based on the exploded parts diagram, looking at the box, I deduced that the wheels have these large washers, one in the inner, and the actual wheel goes on. Doesn't matter, it's non-directional. Apologize for my shaky video here, I'm doing this one-handed. This goes on, and your cotter pin slides through. And you bend into your cotter pin back. I'll show you in the picture what that looks like at the end. All right, so I have assembled the first step, the wheels in the three and a half cubic foot cement mixer that we got at uh, Harbor Freight Tools, which was a great deal, but it is a lot of assembly. So it comes with four of these big metal washers right here. Uh, one goes on the inner, one goes on the outer, and then your cotter pin. So they all just slide over this leg. Um, doesn't matter which direction your tires go because they're, they're universal. So that is step one. So all the hardware you see below is sorted by category of what it is, the stuff to my left. Over here came out of the first bag, less the washers that I've already assembled on my tire, which was a uh, no brainer, big washers and a um, nut to, to shim it. And then over here, um, or cotter pins, sorry, not a nut. And then over here is all the different size bolts and hardware. You'll notice this and this separate. I'm almost certain those are gonna end up going together. Process of elimination, one big nut, one big lock washer. These four right here and these four look the same, but when you match them up next to each other, there's a different length. Same with these two over here and these hardware pieces over here, they're different. They come out different hardware bags. So I'm assuming they're gonna to go to different pieces of assembly. What I've noticed in the Harbor Freight manual is basically you have to come match the numbers on the diagram the numbers here to find out if you have the right, correct number of hardware. Then you have to come back and check your steps, which uh, there is literally a page and a half. This page is step one. That's why I was saying the big cotter pin in this. Um, and then this stage is step two. And that's all they tell you about assembling your whole thing. And then it's supposed to look like this. So yeah, this will be fun. All right, so it tells me hex bolt, flat washer, and flange. So what I've established is the hex bolt is coming through the end, this direction. And what that looks like in real life, if I walk over here, is I'm gonna turn this sideways. And you see this hole right here? It's gonna go through lengthwise. When I tried to determine which hardware I needed, I had to come back here to the diagram page, figure out number 69, come over here to number 69. It tells me I only have two of them. Process of elimination on my table here. I only have two that are long enough to go all the way through the square post in that. So now I know that I'm gonna use the long one. Number five told me I had 18 nuts. This is the only set that has 18 nuts. And ironically, the washer tells me I also have 18, which is number 55. It says I have 18, or I'm sorry, 26 flat washers. And when you look at this table, there is not 26 of any one washer. All I can conclude is they don't care what flat washers go where, with the exception of the large ones over here. I'm assuming that these ones and these ones are interchangeable. These are lock washers, so there's a difference. And then these ones over here are also flat washers. Um, as well as these. These are almost the exact same diameter as these ones, but they're incredibly thin um, as far as like the thickness of the metal, but the diameter of the bolt hole is the same. So it says, since I ha says I have 26 of them, I'm gonna go ahead and use these and uh, fingers crossed, I get it right. Again, based on process of elimination, it told me I'm gonna need four bolts, number 70 says there's four of them. There's four of these long ones, four flat washers, and four of the hex head nuts. So uh, I'm gonna use those to mount the frame. Uh, I'll walk over here and show you those two long bolts. Went through right here, just like I thought they would, and tightened up. These are loose, not lined up yet. Obviously that's where my next four are gonna go, two here, two there. 
and that will complete step one, step one of assembling the frame, which is really a lot more like step three, four, and five, because we got the wheels with the washer on either side with uh, the cotter pins, which was super simple. Um, it does tell you to lay it down flat to do this. As you notice, it's laying on my grass. Pretty much building this is one person. Uh, my husband is popping in and out, handing me tools, but it is not a two person assembly yet. Although when I unboxed it, just to kind of get this out of order, we did use a two person lift to get the drum and the motor pieces out. Sorry about the out of focus, but we did use a two person lift there so as to not hurt our back. Um, and you can see the box is just chilling on the side of my deck there. So first step air is four of these bolts, which are slightly longer than these bolts. I'll show you by putting them next to each other. See, they're a couple threads shorter. So I thought these shorter ones would be the, the ones I wanted. And I went over here and I fed it from the bottom up so that I could put the nut in on hat by hand. But as you can see, we're all the way in and we have nowhere to thread. So I'm gonna uh, grab those longer ones and get these mounted. All right, so we've got this assembly built and my husband got out our tool set because it does not come with any. He's got a 14 millimeter socket on the head and a 12 millimeter wrench on the back side holding it. So we're tightening all these down before we move on to the next step because we only got them hand tight in the assembly process. To lower this drum in and these pieces just slot inside this stand to line up the bolt holes. So you definitely want two people for this because these are moving pieces right here. They rotate around, they're loose until you slide them in here. So we're on step eight here and we just dropped this in the support bracket, which I showed you a picture of what that looks like. And step nine is bolting it into place. It says we're gonna use the hex bolt 71, flat washers 55 and nuts five. So we've been 55 and five are, are the same ones I've been using. So it's these smaller, flatter, these ones here too. Um, but it says there's two of the 71. When I come back here to the diagram, look at how many I'm supposed to have. The one thing that I do think is interesting is it does show that they're the 60 millimeter. They're slightly shorter than the rest. And looking over here, these four appear to be the same length. So they're the only ones that are long enough left to go through the frame. The other four I used for the bottom of the frame. So I'll use two of these to, uh, to build this next section. And that'll be one bolt there and one bolt there when we're done. So we have now bolted down the bottom drum using two of those four bolts that I said were the same length, but they are the slightly shorter variation. Um, the, the parts diagram obviously is slightly wrong, um, but if you look at the bolts down here, um, down here, the reason those ones had to be slightly longer than these ones up here is because this piece slides inside this pole, the, the notched piece for it to mount, and this one at the bottom actually slides over this pole, as you can see. And so um, it's just a little bit thicker diameter on the metal. So the longer bolts to the bottom, shorter bolts here, and they're both fairly long. So we were trying to figure out how to mount this. And Dennis said, question, does it matter where the notch is? And I said, probably does. So we lined up the notch and it, the bolt holes didn't line up. So then we spun it and it locked into place on its own. And then we were able to figure out that based on the parts diagram, we're using a spring washer, then the flat washer to go through here. And these are a threaded hole. So we may or may not need the nut because those look to be threaded. And if those are threaded, we won't need a nut at the end. All right, so we're building the mounting the control plate arm. Um, step 11, 12, 13. And um, process of elimination, again, on the hardware. So what I've come up with is it's the long bolt that's got the one 3M nut. Um, and the two larger washers, they're gonna come through here. The spring just sits in here that will slide over here onto uh, the end of this pole. And we're gonna hand tighten it enough to where we can still move this barrel. Um, Cause that's gonna be the handle that'll let us dump out the cement. Okay, I couldn't get a video of this, but I tried. 
Um, I couldn't get a video because it took two of us. But what you see right here is a spring that sits up in this handle. Come back out a little bit further, you'll see it's a handle. And the whole point for it is that if you pull down, you can then dump this once this tops is on the cement. But it took two of us because we had to push down to get the spring to stay in, to line up this big bolt and nut to get it through. And now we're gonna tighten it up just to where it's snug with a 17 millimeter wrench on this lock washer over here on this side. And I'll get a, I'll get a, I'll get a wrench on that end to hold it still. So luckily I had some gasket maker on hand because on step 14, it says to use the gasket sealer not included to stick the rubber gasket to the upper drum and make sure that the holes both align. So, dun dun dun, it comes with this rubber seal. So I'm gonna stick a, a thin layer, a gasket sealer on this side, and I'm also gonna put a thin layer on the top. Then we're gonna stretch this bad boy around, and make sure all the holes line up before we bolt the top and the bottom together. I should also say process of elimination for bolting the top and bottom together. I'm gonna use these short bolts based on the fact that this is very thin, top and bottom, and it fits through here widthwise. Um, that means that I'll use these ones um, and I'll use these washers because uh, it's six, there's six washers. I've got six of these, I actually got seven. Um, so that'll get me my drums mounted together. So we assembled the drum. It's tilted right now, so, um, cause I got the lever tilted so I can get to the blades on the inside, but we assembled the drum. And one thing it doesn't say anywhere in the instructions is that these two arrows have to match up with that arrow in order for the next step, which is putting your blades in to actually line up the bolt holes up top and the bolt holes in the bottom. So really obnoxious lack of directions. Thanks for another YouTube video and just playing with some things. We figured it out, but this blade is going to mount just like this. Uh, the end of my blades down there at the end are a little bit bent. They came that way, so uh, it also says to use gas concealers around the, the holes um, so that you get a watertight seal and also you're not throwing cement at your motor, which will eventually mount over here. should also mention that these are the larger bolts and washers for the paddle blade. So the nut and bolts on the bottom, it gets a, gets a bolt on the bottom going out. Um, when you come to the inside trying to figure out the paddles so it tells you that the narrow end the skinny part goes to the base or the bottom of the drum and then the wider paddle comes up top here and then it's meant to spin uh, clockwise I think it says in the video or in the instructions which honestly this might have been part of the hardest part of this whole assembly unmount the motor that was temporarily mounted into the back, <laughs> not even mounted into the right position, so that I could get this back cover off, so I can bring it around and actually bolt it on right here in its proper home before we put the motor bracket on. The wheel lines up with the shaft, the grooves and notches must match, and this, they're calling it a pinion shaft piece, it just slides in there so this should all be flush. All right, so here's a picture. I had to flip this platform around. I initially thought it went up, um, but then when I was looking at the manual, at the exploded parts diagram, because there's nothing in here that shows you the motor assembly, the exploded parts diagram shows this bracket having like the little metal welds and the raised lip facing up. So that was the indicator that I had it on upside down. Also, when I went to uh, put the motor on, which will mount right here in a minute, uh, there wasn't enough distance between this pulley and where the motor pulley would go to drag, to drag a belt on. So, um, yep, learn from me. Don't do that upside down. Also, you'll notice some pry marks right here. Um, this wasn't quite wide enough to fit these two bolts once you lock down these bolts back here. And I tried it loose, tight, whatever. I could get three of the four in. Um, so I had to bend this out a little bit in order to be able to mount uh, this support bracket back here evenly and get everything flush and square because it's very important because that is where your motor is going to sit. Uh, and you're pulling your motor, you want that to be tight. You don't want to have to hammer on anything. 
So obviously you want to make sure that the, the bolts and hardware line up. Uh, so I had to make the, the basically the path for the hardware a little wider because this is threaded for these to thread in properly so you don't cross thread anything. Because to cross threading a bolt is a big no-no. And I was not going to return it over to Harbor Freight over what was probably less than a sixteenth of an inch of a millimeter um, of a hardware drilling issue where the bolt holes weren't quite lined up. We've seen this on a couple of the bolts. Um, mostly I've been able to wiggle them and get them in. Um, there was a couple dents and bends along the frame. Uh, one of them was along this barrel here that I used some pliers to bend back out earlier in the day that I didn't show you guys. It was just the way it was packaged. Um, I mean, for the cost of this thing, you cannot complain about um, a few nicks and bends here and there. So I've so. mounted the motor down. Um, these are right now just hand tight. These bolts down here that I'm pointing to. I slid the motor all the way back away from the cement mixer wheel in order to get, I just dropped the belt up and over so I could get a kind of an idea, an eyeball of where that pulley was gonna line up. Cause obviously you want your belt to line up straight with your pulley. Um, you see there's a pretty good gap there and it's not around the bottom pulley. So I'm gonna have to loosen up the motor bracket and raise it up to where that pulley, um, that belt slides over that pulley and I've got the right tension um, without it being too, uh, too tight or too loose. Got the belt and the pulley on and mo mounted. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed, folks. Um, as you can see, you want to have some play, but you don't want it to be too loose to where it won't spin together. Um, now I'm going to mount this cover with the six bolts that are left, and uh, then I'll show you a finished product. All right, here is the finished product. Looks just like on the box, and. Inside, you'll see the little black seam from all the stuff. Uh, one thing you should know, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this handle out and shift it back up into its vertical home position, is that right here is the sprocket that this spins on. You hear it? So um, I've watched several videos to make sure I didn't do anything wrong. That, uh, that gearbox is already assembled for me from Harbor Freight. And they all sound like this when they first get started, apparently. And uh, then from what everybody says over time, it just wears in a little bit. But uh, I'll flip it on over here so you guys can hear it. But that is, that is what it looks like and sounds like. Um, and it's just the... Uh, but it's just the feet here on these gears clicking into here that's what you're hearing vibrate because it's not a tight seal it just is a notch system that runs right through there they get in nice and tight I'm trying to show you those little teeth in the sprockets there kind of like a bicycle sprocket kick up in there so all in all uh, probably took me about two and a half hours to assemble this. My husband and my son came out for some of the heavy lifts. Um, and you're going to want to have a tube of RTV silicon of some kind uh, per the instructions. Uh, I used 10 millimeter inches, 12 millimeter inches, and 14 millimeter inches in sockets throughout this. So you're going to want your own tool set. As you can see, I got mine laid out here. I did have a few pieces of hardware left over. Um, Basically because nothing in the uh, parts diagram as I tried to start going down and checking pieces off, none of the numbers matched here for what it said was there. Um, they basically kind of DIY'd their kit. So this is close, but it's not the same as this. Uh, this is basically your instruction manual on how to build it. And uh, that is not very helpful if you are not a person who likes to build Ikea furniture. This is going to frustrate you. Uh, if you enjoy a challenge, and I do, then a uh, couple hours of work and you'll have yourself a nice cement mixer.